Uh, here we are on a Sunday. I'm relaxing, taking it easy. Uh, I had a good sleep in the morning, and I went out and did a couple things. And I've been watching videos and sipping a couple drams since I got back. And now it's almost noon. So it's getting to be closer to the time of my afternoon nap because when you work nights like I do, you got to try and maintain your schedule to some extent. So I'm doing this. Now I've got a bottle right here that I picked up last night. And I have had this before, but it's been so long since I've had it. It's been maybe... 10, 15 years since I've had this particular expression. I remember it being good, but I don't remember it exactly. It's one of those Isla malts that you can get, I think, everywhere. And if you're a fan of peated malts, this is the one. Um, I have had other expressions from the same distillery that uh, some of them left me kind of cold. And there's one or two that were really wonderful, but this is the standard, this is the one, this is the go-to, one of the go-to Isla Malts. It is the classic Ardbeg 10. It says the ultimate Isla single malt Scotch whiskey. A bit presumptuous, yes, but Ardbeg is good. I remember it being very good. I just haven't had this expression in several donkey's years. I've tried the... There's the bottle. It says once again the ultimate. I have tried the Ugadol. I have tried the Cory Vrecken. I have tried the... Um, trying to remember the name of it, the uh, Ori Verdes, that's the one, the Ori Verdes, so Ugadal, Cori Vrecken, Ori Verdes, of the three I liked the Cori Vrecken the most, but this is just the entry level, age statement, 10 year old, Ugadal, what did I pay? Not no good at all. Art bag. What did I pay? Oh, about $100 in uh, British Columbia prices. That includes taxes and all. What's the other thing I bought at the same time and place? Um, uh, oh, a Glen Kinchy 12. That was also around $100. So the total bill was $2. 102, uh, 208 That was $2.58 over my budget. But then I splurged and, and I bought other whiskeys <laughs> this week. So, yeah, I had a good week, so I bought whiskey. Um, let's give it up. Come on. Come on. There we are. All right. Ardbeg. Ten-year-old. Forty. Six, yeah, forty-six percent alcohol by volume. Uh, seven hundred and fifty mils. I was expecting maybe a seven hundred mil, because they often do that. But this is the seven hundred fifty mil bottling. There. Ardbeg Distillery Limited, non-chill filtered, guaranteed 10 years old. This is, uh, these glasses are not good enough to read this fine print. 
I'm too lazy to go and get my reading glasses. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yes. Peat smoke. Peat smoke. Now, the color is a natural color from what I can tell. This is aged in ex bourbon barrels, I'm pretty sure. Some of them are first fill, some of them are second or third fill. I'm pretty sure they use a mix of barrels. It is the classic expression of, yes, there is peat smoke. As that moves aside, there's a little bit of a fruity note. A little bit of a seaweed iodine kind of note. It's not a bad thing. It's very pleasant, actually. Yeah, there's that seaweed iodine note. There's... There's a bit of a sweetness, maybe some caramel and vanilla in there, but mostly it's the smoke that sits on top of it, which has to waft away to the sides to get to the good stuff. The smoke is beautiful. It's a nice balanced smoke. Yeah, I could I could nose this all day. It's lovely stuff. Let's cleanse the palate. The last thing I had was some uh, Glasgow edition uh, Great King Street. Which is somewhat smoky and somewhat sherry and very nicely balanced. This is going more towards the smoke end of the spectrum. And of course, this is a single malt, not a blend of malts, which the King Street is. Ah, oh, now I'm getting some. Some toffees and vanillas underneath the smoke, which is just hanging over it like a cloud. Mmm. There's a definite complexity to this. For under the smoke, there are other things. Some salt, some fruit, some seaweed, some iodine. Ah, well, let's give it a taste. First of all, the smoke, it coats the mouth on every level. Then there's salt. There's salt. And smoke. And salt and smoke. And the smoke is more powerful on the palate than on the nose. I'm getting, now that it's gone down, there's a long lingering aftertaste of smoke. 
the the saltiness is disappearing. There's still smoke there. There's still smoke coating the back of my mouth and down my throat. Mm. Excusing me, please. Now, can I get anything more in the way of subtlety than that? There is the smoke. Once again, smoke, salt, seaweed, iodine. This is not really a bonfire smoke. I would call it more medicinal. But it's not tarry in the way uh, Lafroig is. This is a more delicate smoke. Uh, with a less tar than Laphroaig, but there's that there's definitely that maritime thing to it. I'm not getting a little a lot of fruit, maybe a hint of pineapple at the most. It's a marine, salty, smoky symphony, if you will. That's mostly what you get, smoke and a little bit of other things. But on the nose, Mm. Oh. Oh. It's changing as it sits in the glass. Now the smoke is dissipating and I'm getting some caramel. Caramel and vanilla even. Yes. You have to give this time. You have to give it time for the smoke to just go its own way. Now, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add just just a few drops of water. I don't usually do this, but in order to get maybe some more flavor. Just a few drops of water. Maybe that will enhance the experience a little bit. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've had this one. And I know as a fact that the smoke will get weaker as it oxidizes and then the other flavors that are hiding behind the smoke are going to come out like I'm hoping they will with the addition of a few drops of water okay I'm still getting smoke but it's more subtle than it was. Um, there's the seaweed and iodine. I'm tasting wood. I'm tasting oak now. And it's become drier since I put water in. The smoke is coating my mouth in every direction. I'm sure that if I was to drink any other whiskey after this, all I would taste is this. I would taste the smoke. Ah.
with the smoke gone, well, it's still, it's full of smoke. Actually, you know, now that I added a little bit of water, the smoke is more intense. It's really mouthwatering. Or is that that hint of caramel and vanilla that I was getting before? It's it's changing again. It's all changing again. It's very woody now. I'm getting a lot of oak. I'm just tasting wood. Which is strange now that the smoke is gone. I'm just tasting wood. Wood, 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 wood. Oak wood. Old oak wood. Hmm. This is quite a journey, this one. Marzipan. There's a note of marzipan in there. Just on the very tip of my tongue. Where everything else is covered in oak and smoke. But I'm not tasting the smoke so much anymore. The initial shock of it. Well, I did have a slightly smoky whiskey before this. And now the oak. I'm so used to the oak that the other subtleties are coming. There's more wood. And I know I didn't drown this. I'm trying to pinpoint what that other flavor is. There's another flavor in there. Try it again. Salty. Salty. Oak wood. But there's something else. I'm getting a little bit of bitterness. Maybe tannins from old barrels. Yeah. A little bit of bitterness in the aftertaste at the end. Well, I've almost finished my dram just trying to taste everything in it. I'm sure that this will be more interesting as the bottle goes down. As you can see, I just, just popped it right there. So when we get to about here, it should be interesting. And I've taken up enough of your time, so slunch ya. Food queen. <laughs> Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>